To make communication between local access points and Extreme Cloud IQ more efficient and not to build an additional TLS tunnel for every single AP, uh, which would cause a lot of load uh, both on the um, your network and our cloud infrastructure, the access points elect something we call RATSEC proxies. Every access point management subnet will have two RATSEC proxies running, running in it. And they are selected based on a uh, voting mechanism that happens uh, through cooperative control protocols. It's transparent, so you don't have to worry about it. But the main thing is every management subnet will have two RATSEC proxies running in it. And those two devices are the only two devices that will build a RATSEC tunnel to the uh, Extreme Cloud IQ, that, thus minimizing the amount of tunnels that are in, uh, initiated and thus minimizing the load on the network. And what happens with other non-RATSEC proxy access points? Well, they will simply point to those two devices and instead of communicating with the cloud, they will, in, they will initiate or send any authentication request to the AP uh, RATSEC proxies instead. Uh, the election is dynamic, transparent, it's not something you have to worry about. In the lab you will see how you can identify a RATSEC proxy, how you can verify where they are, uh, and how to troubleshoot RATSEC proxies uh, if you should run into a problem. Uh, you will, if you have multiple management subnets, then each of the subnets will have two RATSEC proxies, and if you wanted to force more, uh, actually each hive or each group of access points with, with a unique hive key will have two RATSEC proxies. So let's take a look how the cloud-based PPSK authentication works. The client device requests access to the network. If it is connecting to a RATSEC proxy AP, well, that, that AP will build, well, will use the tunnel that is already built um, to authenticate the user against the user database sitting in Extreme Cloud IQ. One thing to remember is that tunnel is encrypted. So even though that traffic is passing through public internet, it is the credentials are only verified within a secure and encrypted tunnel. So uh, that's why we are using RATSEC, that's why we're using RADIUS within the TLS. If the client device is connecting to a non-RATSEC proxy AP, then that AP will first relay the message uh, using cooperative control protocols. It will know which AP is the RATSEC proxy. So it will relay the message to the RATSEC proxy first, and then, then the RATSEC proxy will authenticate the user towards uh, the Extreme Cloud IQ platform. In the Extreme Cloud IQ platform, what's going to happen is a PMK is going to be generated if the authentication is successful. That PMK is going to be pushed down through that secure RATSEC tunnel to the RATSEC proxy AP, and the cooperative control protocols will then be used to redistribute that PMK to all the access points within that same layer to domain or to all the access points using the same hive key, which then in turn enables seamless roaming between all of these access points. And when the client device moves from one AP to another, all it needs to do is reinitiate the four-way handshake to get a new encryption key. No need to wait for PMK generation, and the only time when the communication with the cloud happens is upon the first, or uh, when on the first connection uh, and not on consecutive roaming uh, events. Extreme Cloud IQ offers something we call identity APIs to implement PPSK credential lifecycle management. And just a couple of examples of applications that our partners have built and some of the applications we've been uh, prototyping ourselves within the company. Um, for example, when you have an event, you want to have your users access the Wi-Fi network in a secure way without, without that same PSK being compromised because it's going to be shared by everybody uh, or without offering an open unencrypted uh, network. So what you can do is uh, you use an application running on a tablet. When a user comes in they leave their email and their phone number and once they finish that process the tablet or the application on the tablet will generate a PPSK for them which can then be provisioned by scanning a QR code 
and then get that provisions that Wi-Fi profile with that PPSK on their device. So it's a very seamless experience. It creates a unique credential for every device, for every user coming to the event. Uh, and then because they're leaving their um, details, you can also map those users to emails um, and phone numbers if that's something that you need. Now, why emails and phone numbers? Well, we can use those two as channels of distribution for the PPSK. So when you don't have an app running, when you use a cap, something like a captive web portal, uh, or you don't want to display a PPSK, the PPSK can be shared, uh, again, natively from the Extreme Cloud IQ, either through an email message to the email that the, the user has left, or as an SMS message to the user's phone. So, and then you can also have a verification of who that user is. So you not only generate a PPSK, but by distributing the PPSK to a valid email or a valid phone, you've also verified that that person actually exists and you do have uh, that, you do, ha you do have their email and their phone number on the record if that is something that you need for later. The, um, Use cases are actually quite extensive. Uh, you can use PPSK, identity APIs for things like onboarding, IoT devices. Uh, you can use it in hospitality for hotel guests. Uh, you can use it for BYOD devices, uh, again, either by providing a purpose-built app for that or by using a captive web portal solution natively built in Extreme Cloud IQ to generate and onboard those devices as well. So it offers a lot of flexibility. Uh, you can use pre-configured and natively available workflows which are based on a captive web portal and available with the Extreme Cloud IQ or you can build your own applications and your own workflows however you want. Uh, and that's why the identity APIs are there. If you want to know more about how to use and how to develop using the APIs, you should go to developer.extremecloudiq.com and you will find more information on the APIs, how you can use them, how you can leverage them, and how you can start writing your own uh, identity APIs based apps. So how to troubleshoot a PPSK deployment? Um, there's really two common cases where you would actually need to uh, look into the RedSec or uh, PPSK uh, troubleshooting. One is, well, the RedSec port is not open between your access point and the Extreme Cloud IQ. And the second one is the certificates used to encrypt and protect that connection are no longer valid. So let's look at how you can, how you can use the built-in tools to troubleshoot and quickly identify those two scenarios. The first thing uh, in the Extreme Cloud IQ monitor interface, the RedSec proxy APs are pointed out by this database icon that you can see on the screen. And you, you always have at least two uh, RedSec proxies, and depending on how many management subnets you have, there are going to be two per every management subnet. The um, icon indicates that that device has already been elected as a RedSec proxy, and it also means it has already built a secure tunnel to Extreme Cloud IQ. If that icon, if none of the APs have that icon, means none of the APs have been elected as a RedSec proxy or have built, have successfully built a RedSec tunnel back to Extreme Cloud IQ. To troubleshoot this further, from the monitor view, you can actually initiate a CLI session to an individual access point. So you'd be able to go to any of the access points and do a command that says show IDM. And that command will tell you which access point within the network has been elected as a RedSec proxy. And once you find that AP, you initiate another CLI session to that particular AP, run the same command, and that's going to tell you whether the uh, RedSec tunnel is being established, whether the certificates are there, whether the certificates are still valid, and whether or not, uh, or what's the state of the connection, whether or not the device is connecting to Extreme Cloud IQ over the RedSec tunnel. So show IDM is the command that helps you out helps you find out what's actually happening with the RedSec proxies. So using the show IDN command, you'll be able to identify any certificate related issues and you'll be able to verify whether or not the device has initiated and successfully connected uh, to Extreme Cloud IQ over the RedSec protocol. What if it hasn't? Well, there is a command available again through the CLI and the CLI is available uh, through the GUI. Uh, of Extreme Cloud IQ, and that command is exec AAA IDM test RedSec proxy. And what that does, it, it will 
reinitiate the RedSec tunnel and it will also display any errors or any reasons why that is failing. So the um, messages are displayed and interpreted in a very straightforward way. So for example, we have on the screen an example where the RedSec proxy um, is connected uh, to the ID manager authentication gateway, which means, yes, we have a RedSec proxy up and running. Um, or it could say it's not connected because TCP port 2083 uh, isn't reachable. So it's going to give you a, it's going to give you a very straightforward feedback in terms of what's wrong, and then you can go and reconfigure your firewall as necessary. Um, so the thing to do here is we need to make sure that the TCP port 2083 is uh, open. And the other scenario that could happen is when you run this command, it's going to say, oh, there's no certificates present. Well, in that case, you need to manually push new RATSEC certificates from the Extreme Cloud IQ uh, and push them to your access points. And there's, in the GUI, there's an option to do that, which we'll look at in the lab.